how am I gonna get any painting done with this guy? Hi guys, welcome back to another week of Art Life. In this week's episode, I want to share a little bit about my current practice with you guys, get you up to date with all my new painting, and also talk a little bit about some of the difficulties with painting in solitude. If like me, you're in a studio, just on your own making work, um, maybe just kind of going a little bit crazy in the winter and yeah, just opening up a dialogue about painting on your own in isolation in winter. So for those of you who have been following my Instagram, you'll know that Rafe is in Dubai filming in the desert. weeks so this is week two I've been on my own for two weeks which inspired this kind of conversation about what it's like to be an artist like self-employed working on your own the dream of it but also some of the challenges that presents with how you need to manage your time and some of the um, distractions that can just pull you away from your practice so easily uh, without having other people around you like in a shared studio to just help keep you on track I mean I have Finn this little guy here who is he just wants to have a cuddle all the time. So that is a distraction. I mean, who wouldn't want to cuddle him? Um, so yeah, let's let's talk a little bit about the realities of painting in so, sort of solitude, particularly if like me, you're quite introverted. Um, I mean, you have to be, to just be lost in your own head making paintings. Um, it's probably one of the like main personality requirements. Um, so yeah, and I want to share with you a little bit about this new work I'm doing, uh, a new series of landscapes. Um, Yes, there's some kind of quite ethereal colours going on. It is still deepest, darkest winter, so finding it really hard to do anything colourful. I just want to paint in different shades of grey and brown. Um, but that's all good. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, Thursday, I have decided to go into the mountains to do some skiing for a few days with my sister, who's also an artist, and we thought it would be cool to maybe make an art life episode, you know, either an apre or just you know, sketching some mountains, you know, somewhere up in the Alps, uh, just for a bit of a break, because I've been in the studio for a while and I feel like I need to escape for a bit. So there's lots to look forward to next week. I do love doing my mountain paintings. I've done a few mountain paintings in the past. Um, obviously not last year because of lockdown, but the year before um, I was in St Anton getting loads of inspiration and obviously skiing and having a lovely time. But um, we made a video when I got back of the paintings I was doing straight fresh from kind of that trip to Austria. Um, and we found that video and I just thought I'd quite like to share it with you because I painted it literally this week, two years ago um, in my old studio. And again, you can see the atmosphere of what it's like painting in winter on your own when you're just exploring solitude and peace and quiet. So um, yeah, check this video out first and then we'll get to sharing some of my new stuff.
that whole painting was about introversion, silence and solitude in painting, creating using a cool palette for winter in a way which felt productive and exciting to me. Um, I think I was really juiced up from, you know, all the inspiration and all the landscapes. So I'm very much looking forward to that over the next few weeks. Um, also, I remember that a lot of stuff was going wrong with those paintings. And when I look back on it now, I'm like, what was I on about? What was wrong with them? They looked amazing. So I think often I can be quite hard on myself with paintings. And then time in retrospective shows me that actually they were fine. And it was just me over analyzing and trying to be a perfectionist, which is a symptom of being on your own too much, I think, as a painter wanting it you have an idea in your head of what you want it to look like and it never quite comes out like that um there's a few paintings I've been doing last week which have gone so wrong like they are just brown sludge and I'm going to be honest about it I'm going to share it with you now I had it and I've lost it I'm okay with the sky but there's just something about this new figurative like landscape I'm trying to do which isn't working and I'm going to be very honest about that and see if I can fix it today and share that with you guys if it doesn't work who cares um and that's the thing it's it's sort of like if it doesn't work it doesn't matter like the main thing is trying and keeping pushing not stopping not saying oh I can't do it anymore no no we've got to keep doing it we've got to keep trying we've got to keep seeing what we can do with paint seeing what we can like learn from our mistakes and also see if we can achieve like new heights of beauty with paint like I feel like there's so much more I need to learn and I'm really excited to be kind of sharing that with you guys and um, since I'm completely on my own and there's no one else to share it with let's get into it I think I don't know where to start I think I'll start by like getting rid of Finn because I'm not going to do anything with Finn lying on my lap let's start with a big one okay so I'm all ready to go I think we should start doing this one which I need to fix like the big challenge first and then if it starts to look like it goes well, I can share with you the victory or if I make it even more horrendous, maybe some of you guys can leave comments below about how you think I can fix it. Um, yes, and don't forget to like and subscribe this video if you haven't already and or if you're new to Art Life, welcome. Um, this is just basically me showing my studio practice and little kind of tips and tricks about oil painting and the art history and anything that we're kind of like interested in at the moment. It's what Art Life is all about. Um, the reason I called this channel Art Life was because when I was at school, Art Club was the best two hours of my week. It was four till six on a Wednesday afternoon. And it's, oh, it was my like favorite two hours of the week. And I realized that now there's no more Art Club. It's literally just Art Life. Every day is Art Club. Um, so for those of you who are wondering why we called it Art Life, that's why. Yes, fun fact. Uh -huh. Great, great brown sludge blue it was all blue and now it's brown so this is what I've got to fix it's just sludgy misty mess I did it with this one as well sludgy misty mess this one I am quite happy with at the moment this one is an underpainting, which now kind of looks so good, I don't want to touch it. And then we've got this one I've just started of this lovely rose cloud, so. face. Do you know how cute you are?
update with this one. I love what I've been doing. I think it's kind of really strong. However, it feels a little bit discombobulated from the rest of the composition. As much as I love the sky, I feel like it doesn't fit with the kind of scale of the landscape and the kind of imposed horizon line and the way, like where light's hitting on the composition. So I might continue doing what I'm doing maybe tomorrow now, it's a little bit late. Um, just keep building up the composition and then maybe make some drastic changes based on how I feel like the eye is drawn into the composition where I want the viewer to sit and explore. It feels a bit like you go into the landscape and then you have to kind of go backwards to look at the sky. Um, it's almost like I've jet, like tried to push together two paintings that, that don't really sit well. Um, which is interesting because I, I've done this composition thoroughly. I've figured out what I wanted, but it's it's what happens when the alchemy of being on the canvas kind of changes decisions that you're making in the moment. And looking at it now, I just think that there's a, there's just more potential for this painting to look a lot richer. It's just looking a bit more sort of flat. Um, so that's a challenge for tomorrow. Stay tuned. Okay. Oh, look at you. Look at you. He's so big. Oh, such good company. Right, good morning. We have a new day in the studio. Um, had quite a late one last night um, and came to the decision before I stopped painting that the whole problem with this painting is the sky, as beautiful as it is, it's kind of not working, the sense of depth, the horizon line is a bit too forceful, it feels like it deadens the composition. Um, so I think what I'm going to do is just shift the painting so it has a bit more of like this energy. This is just a quick test I did, um, playing with unrealistic colour palette obviously, but just volume and maybe a slightly Rococo palette, the Tiepolo reference with the buoyancy of the brush strokes with the kind of traditional Venetian skyscapes that I love so much but really it just has energy and I feel like this doesn't anymore so I'm gonna change it which is what I love about my job I can just make snap decisions like this and I might regret it in 10 minutes but it feels like it will just activate the painting a bit it's looking a bit too flat so let's do that it's part of the job you just have to go with your instincts and everyone's probably like no what are you doing don't do that well Solitude does this to you. You have to trust your instincts. You have to trust the little voice in your head, which is telling you, no, it's not right. Because um, it's, you know, one of the great things I miss about working in the studio with others is that I could ask another painter, hey, do you think I should do this? Critiques in painting studio practice are invaluable. Uh, and I don't have that at the moment. Uh, and I won't get it until I post this video. And then you guys might comment like, actually, you should have done this. Um, but we're doing the best we can. Um, I am posting about this on Instagram. So a few of you might have already seen what I'm doing now. If you follow me at Jess Oliver Art. And if you don't, it's an excuse to because you'd have get all of this drama and this kind of change, dramatic changes with the sky um, that much quicker. So all the more reason to follow me on Instagram.
this. So I think I'm kind of going to leave it there for a bit and just see how it goes. I'm really happy with the rendering of the kind of soft, transparent oxide yellow with the Turner's yellow, bringing it to life a bit, making it a lot more kind of ethereal and more of the atmosphere that I was looking for with the painting. So watch this space to see how this one goes over the next few days. Um, and before we close, I did just want to finish up with a few notes I've had on isolation and solitude in art practice. Um, researching this, there are a few articles which I think might be quite helpful if people are interested in the psychology of art and solitude. I'll add those in at the comment section below. Um, it's a big topic and I think famously Shakespeare wrote King Lear in solitude, in isolation. I think being away from the world without distractions can often have a very big impact on the practical application of creativity. Not having distractions means that we can be productive, prolific. I know Georgia O'Keeffe and Frida Kahlo in their practices were well known for having big chunks of time when they would disappear away from society and just make loads of work where they weren't constantly being pulled in lots of different directions by the kind of demands of daily life. Alfred Wallace was known for going into seclusion in his uh, St Ives Cor Cornwall studio and just working from memory until he was ready to like return to the world. It's kind of what I feel like I'm doing now. I think I'll re-engage with the world after I've kind of painted prolifically and then I'll just have a break and then I'll return. And kind of doing that in a way which feels quite balanced. Balance is very important so solitude doesn't become isolation. Isolation in art is usually when artists have been ostracised from society and that is a big topic, something which we would need a whole other episode to go into. Um, because it does tackle some big issues, particularly with the boundaries of mental health or um, the kind of difficulties artists would have had if they were in prison making art. Um, yeah, lots to talk about there in a future episode. But I think Louise Bourgeois said it perfectly. She sums it up in saying that solitude, even prolonged solitude, can only ever be of great benefit. There's never a, there's never a time when solitude is bad for art practice because having time to distill your mind, removing stimuli, revitalizes imagination in essence is what bourgeois was saying it's saying that solitude can only mitigate distractions and self-sabotage so yeah i think we do sabotage ourselves with the kind of demands of daily life and we constantly are feeding ourselves with information digital information lots of screens in our lives nowadays there's never enough time quietness and solitude does um tend to slow us down and i think you can be a lot more productive when you're in a slower rhythm Although I do listen to audible books uh, and loud music when I'm painting. So maybe I should try and paint in silence and see how that looks. Um, that might be an experiment for another day. Um, the COVID boom really helped. All of us were in isolation. We were all away from each other, just trying to use our time in a way which was more productive. I know some people learnt languages and new skills creatively, learning ceramics, learning sculpture, returning to watercolour. I did try and refine my skills as a painter. Covid isolation and solitude gave me that space to try new things that maybe I wouldn't have tried before. So I think as a practice, as something I need to work at, isolation in art, solitude in art, time away in the studio with just myself and my work, it is hard, but the more I do it, the easier I'm finding it and the more nurturing it's becoming. It's engagement. I never thought of solitude and painting as being engaging, but actually it's engaging with myself as a painter, not just constantly needing uh, the supportive network I have to be validating my practice. I love that I have got a really good supportive network, but it's also quite self-empowering to know that, you, that I identify with my work as well as something which I'm proud of. When I think of artists and solitude, my mind does go to the 1950s Edward Hopper, uh, kind of beautiful urban landscapes, describing urban solitude, morning sun, office in a small city, that lone figure in a cafe. Cities can be lonely places. I remember living in London sometimes in the heart of the city, feeling incredibly lonely. Like that's a really interesting discussion, how it doesn't matter what surrounds you, it's how you sit within yourself. And Hopper really does describe this beautifully. There's cavernous spaces of urban lights and structures with these lone figures just kind of dreamily sort of alone in their own quiet space. And we can all, I think, superimpose ourselves on Hopper's characters. Um, maybe that's something we could talk about in a future episode. Um, okay, so solitude in painting is a difficult topic, but I feel like we have had a little introduction today and I'm I'm glad I could just share my practice with you guys at the moment um, 
I mean, I'm not really in solitude. <laughs> I mean, I have, I have company, <laughs> but yes, it's an interesting subject. And if you guys want to hear a little bit more about it in the future, maybe write in the comments below and I could maybe go into some research about artists who really have cut themselves off from society to make amazing artwork. Um, that could be a great subject. So um, I'm gonna let this dry and yeah, just keep painting. That's all I'm gonna be doing. So until next week, please tune in. Don't forget to like and subscribe and yeah, I'll see you next week guys. Thank you for joining me and keeping me company in my solitary week of painting. Bye. Mm-hmm.